I just saw a guy and he said the most awkward thing to me during the hookup. So context of the story, he's like texting me, he's upstairs and he's like, I'm locked. And I'm like, what do you mean you're locked? Like I gave you my room number, how you locked. And then he sends me a photo and he had like locked himself in the fire escape. And I'm hung over, I just don't have the patience for this. So he's like, come collect me. I'm like, oh, fine. So I like, come collect him. And I'm like, why did you go into the fire escape? And he's like, oh, I just didn't know where to go. And I was like, oh, okay. I'm just letting you know that like, no one's ever done this before. <laughs> and so I was kind of a bitch, right? So anyways, we get to doing it. And in the middle of doing it, he goes, you're so sweet, sweet like honey. <laughs> and I'm like, okay <laughs> then we like pause for like 20 seconds and we just keep going <laughs> because let me tell you i'm a lot of things but sweet is not one of them bro i'm so sweet <sighs> that's my college days but wow he was i want to let you know sir that you're the first you're the first to ever do this and i do not appreciate it <laughs> like what are you doing why are you being goofy? It's not attractive. Like, what are we doing? How'd you get locked in the fire escape? Like, first of all, the most important question is, what was you doing? <laughs> what possessed you to go outside on the fire escape? Outside, honey. This is a hookup. Why are you going outside? Why are you, why are you going outside? Okay, okay. Yeah, you don't know? I don't know either. We're going to keep with moving. <laughs> it's like, what? And then, oh, you're so sweet. Oh, dirty talk. Oh, you're so sweet. I, I ain't never heard nobody say that to me during spicy time. That's different. That's different. You know me. I'm so quick to be like, okay, this is weird. Get up. Get up and leave. <laughs> no. Because <laughs> I don't have patience sometimes. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. But yeah, that was weird, friend. Um, Hopefully that was the first and last time. <laughs> but I don't know. It might have been good. You never know. <laughs> Different strokes for different folks. Today is the last day of Pride Month. It is also my birthday. And boy, do I have a story for you. So this morning, my girlfriend and I went to this restaurant called Snooze. It's a breakfast chain restaurant thing, right? So we live in the South. And it's hard here to be gay, for sure. Um, but there's pride flags here and stuff. So we're like, okay, this this place would probably be cute. And we've been before, so it's probably fine, right? But this server, right, he takes us to our table, sees us holding hands, first of all, so he knows. He's hip to the vibe, okay? And we're sitting down, whatever, whatever. And he's standing at a table, like, right next to ours, basically. And he's talking to another server. And I start to pick up the conversation. And he's like, oh, yeah, actually, I love having gay couples be here like I prefer gay couples actually because think about all the disposable income because they usually don't have children like they could only adopt so there's like more to be had there and I'm like what the fuck and like the server with him was agreeing and stuff like just kind of going along having their little conversation or whatever and I was like um <laughs> what so like you specifically like gay couples because you think you're gonna get tipped better? Like obviously I don't know the context of what you're saying, but like you're my server right now. You just saw us walk in, a gay couple. Like what the fuck else could you be talking about? And why are you saying it right next to me? So I tell my girlfriend what I've overheard because she was on the other side, she couldn't hear this. And we were like, mm, that's fucked up. So after he brings her food, we're like, can we speak to the manager? And she comes over, she's the same person that he was talking to. Ah, oh my God. But she sits down and talks to us and I start talking and I quote him and she, her eyes go wide. Like you could tell, she's like, oh shit, fuck, she heard me. She heard us talking. And I was like, that's very homophobic. Like you have a flag in your window that's for us. Like, and it's literally the last day of Pride Month. Like also it's my birthday, by the way. But, and I'm a lesbian. How can you be doing this to me? But we were like, yeah, that's really fucked up. You at least need to take the flag down if you're going to let people who work here talk like that. And she was like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. Like, you know, he, we have so many people who are gay who work here. And I was like, yeah, I'm sure you do. We're everywhere. 
We're everywhere, bitch. All the more reason he shouldn't be talking like that. What the, what the fuck? And she tried to be really nice about it. She gave us like half of our meal and whatever. But I'm just like, this is really fucked up. You are letting people talk like this to you and not turning that shit on in your brain during Pride Month when you have a flag. What the fuck? Bruh, to be white in America, bruh, to be white, she got half off her meal because of this. Honestly, friend, I don't think this is a big deal. As a lesbian woman of myself, as a pansexual lesbian woman, I didn't get offended. That is wild to me. What? It's, it's facts in that. It's facts in that. There's a whole saying of, oh, my rich aunt, my rich lesbian aunt. That's a whole thing. That's a whole thing there. Aunt spoiled their nieces and nephews. Lesbian aunt spoiled their nieces and nephews because they had dispendable income. Like, that's a thing. Like, they don't have children, so they spoil their nieces and nephews. Is that not a thing, you guys? Is that not a thing? Rich lesbian aunts? Is that not a thing? I was not offended by that. I was very like, oh, that, that was low-key a compliment. Like, that, that was facts that he was laying there. Why are we so easily offended, honey? Why are we so easily offended, you guys? Like, why, why are we offended by that? I'm just... <sighs> You're entitled to your own emotions and feelings, but I feel like as a millennium, you just got to have tough skin because as a black lesbian in the South, <laughs> I have had so much more discrimination. That was nothing, honey. That was actually a compliment. Like, come on now. Come on now. I live in the South and it's not, I guess because I've, I just don't care sometimes like I just don't care if people are looking at me and not the comments and stuff I get when I'm out with my when I had a significant other was oh y'all are so cute I love y'all together because we always bad I only date baddies honey and, unless I don't because you know sometimes I'm not that shallow but when you know back in the day holding hands it's just like but my thing is I hold hands with all of my friends like <laughs> It's just a thing we do here in North Carolina. You see two girls holding hands. It's not automatically, we're not automatically going to assume that you're gay. Like, it's just, you know, girls just hold hands here. Like, it's just a thing. Like, you go to the club, you'll see girls holding hands, going through the lines. Like, it's just a thing. Like, it's just normal. So, I never had this experience where it was just like, you know, weird or discrimination as a lesbian. Not as a lesbian. No, never. As a black woman. Yeah, as a woman only. Yeah, as a black person. Yeah, boo, you pushing it. You pushing it, cause I just, I mean, comment below if you would have got offended by that, because honestly, as a waitress, a waiter, as a delivery driver, it's just a thing. I always liked going to Hispanic houses. It's Hispanic households loved it because I knew they were going to tip, and they were going to tip like they loved me like they meant it honey so there's like there's just stereotypes and there's just facts <laughs> stereotypes and facts if i go back down the line of which race tipped me the most or who always tipped me we're going to see hispanics are always tipping it's like i'm i don't know why i guess I, they just know the value of work i don't know i don't know but the thing is there's some people who just tip it's just in their culture to tip you you go to some countries they don't tip that's like not the thing they do like you know what i'm saying so i'm just confused why we're getting offended by the fact that he said that he loves the gays because they're generous like why where's the offense in there we're generous we should you know that's a win we don't get many wins let's let's take that as a win because it is a win like yo there's something positive that they just said about us and you got offended i'm offended by the fact that you got offended because <laughs> i'm just trying to be like oh yeah it's your p you can have your thoughts if you got offended you got offended you're entitled to that but i'm just like bruh bruh you try to cancel them and you literally went on social media and you said their name and it's just like that wasn't really a serious i've i've seen in my lifetime some things that are cancelable like restaurants do some things and it's just like whoa the waiter the waitress do some things and you're just like whoa you can't recover that so that 
it's woo, girl let's go let's go to the next thing let's go to the next video because oh wow all right this is a gay story for my weekend that i thought was worth sharing because there's a good lesson to be learned i was at an all-gay resort in fort lauderdale this weekend and i saw this guy in the pool who was like one of the most gorgeous men ever like in my opinion just like so beautiful and i was like no like oh dude's so hot like i'm not gonna shoot my shot whatever um so then a few hours later you know drinking all day we go to this bar after the resort and it's probably like 6 p.m we go in and he's sitting on the couch one of the first couches when you walk into the bar and i was like oh of course i have to like look at this guy for another hour like great and in my head i was like yes he's probably out here meeting some other hot guy whatever uh so we end up leaving that bar like an hour later and we go to a second bar and as i'm in there who walks in right after me was this guy from the resort so Again, in my head, my friend's like, go talk to him. I was like, no, 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 no. Like, this isn't some universal sign that I should, like, talk to this guy and shoot my shot and take my chance, whatever. So I let it go again. And now it's, like, midnight. And we go to a third bar, the final bar of the night. And I'm standing in there. And 10 minutes after, I'm, I, I walk in the door. He strolls in right after me. And I was, like, pretty drunk at this point. So I walked up to him. I was like, I was like, just fucking do it. Just do it. Just do it. Uh, so I walk up and I was like, are you following me? And he kind of like laughed or whatever. And he was like, no, but you know, I've been watching you since the pool this morning. And like, I wanted to say something to you so bad, but I couldn't get up the nerve. So lo and behold, this guy that I thought I could never have a chance with was looking at me all the while. And I wasted a whole day waiting. I mean, we had another whole day together, which was beautiful and nice and sweet. But that's your, that's your lesson. You know what? Go talk to the guy that you think is hot from across the bar. Cause there's a good chance that he's thinking the same thing about you. It's kind of like, you know, if they wanted to, they would. Well, in the case with two guys, what if you're both saying if they wanted to, they would? Then neither of you would. So take my advice. Thank you. It's my TED Talk. That's what I be saying to y'all. Shoot your shot because you never know. And with guys, sometimes they just be a breath. They just be, oh, well, no, nope, I'm in my head. Or they just be not aware. So shoot your shot you never know and you look good too you presenting you bringing your best self honey yes confidence is sexy honey you might think you don't have a chance but in reality you do have a chance in reality you never know unless you go take the chance honey yes i love that for you friend go get your bed hit get your booty call your weekend boo or whatever it was i'm so happy for you that is a lesson to all y'all out there too if you know somebody you see somebody you think is fun shoot your shot don't i mean that was like the universe said hey 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 now i didn't give you a sign i didn't give you two signs now three signs if you don't do this <laughs> so sometimes you don't need all those signs just go with your your heart side your heart side go that was corny that was cheesy how hard it is to be a stud i just want to live my little gay ass life <laughs> Nah, for real though, it's getting hard out here for these ninjas. The female population must be going down or something because they starting to run down on the studs. Like, I don't understand. I'm walking one day trying to pay for my damn parking meter. And this ninja gonna come up to me like, yo, like, can you come over here real quick? And I'm thinking he gonna ask me about my haircut because I always got a haircut, you feel me? And then I was gonna be like, you know, I'm a barber here, you know, throw that in there or whatever. Guy like, oh, can I get your number? I'm like, what? I'm gay, like, what? Our pants is at the same level right now. My shit sagging, your shit sagging, bro. Like, what's up? Like, Ninja gonna be like, oh, I see you a little gay, but I could change that. I didn't even go nowhere after that. I literally just got back in my car and left. I was gonna go to Macy's and get some white tees, and I said, never mind. <laughs> it really be like that. Drake got these niggas. I mean, ninjas. <laughs> got these ninjas wilding out honey wilding out i mean before drake they was wilding i get that all the time i be out in public and i the moments i decide not to go to the gay bar because i like this i like going to any bar any bar and i have a lot of straight friends i have a lot of bi friends i said straight but they bi forgot they're bi i have a lot of bi friends and they want to go dance and get a guy get guys so we go to straight clubs. I have no problem going to that because most of the times I'm not looking to get God. I'm not. Let's just be honest. Let's be honest. So I usually run into those guys that are just like, oh, I can change you. Oh, you're gay. I can change you. Honey, I am um, 10 years old. <laughs> I'm at the age where I don't say my age out loud. <laughs> but um, 
I think I know what my sexuality is at this age, honey. I'm very aware you can't change me. I can change you, honey. Let me strap up real quick. I can change you. But you can't change me. No, no thanks for asking. Like, listen to me. I don't want you. I want your girlfriend. I want your sister. I want your mama. Definitely. But I don't want you. Leave me alone. Keep it moving. That's real wild, though. It's like, oh, I want you. Ninja. I'm a ninja. I used to have a friend like that. I just be like, ninja, you gay. <laughs> ninja, you gay. Just rally it up, rally it on these ninjas because they don't know. And that's my thing I be talking about. They be hitting on gay women and gay women be like, I don't want you. But the moment a gay man hits on them, it's a whole problem. It's a crazy problem. So I commend you, friend, for getting your car and leaving. I would have been the same way. Like, I, you just messed up my whole trip. Like, I didn't, you didn't messed up my mind right here. Because <laughs> it's just it's like, what, you, what are we doing? Like, stop, stop. I gotta go to another store now because I don't wanna be, nope, because I know you. You gonna be following me around. You gonna be bugging me like, nope, I ain't got time for that. Nope. Mm mm.